Now, I want to address something today that I hear frequently and something I even heard in a recent PM, the question of uh, genetic dead ends or genetic legacy. This idea that if you don't reproduce, well, you, know, you don't live on. And I think people have a tendency to mystify this concept and mystify this idea such that they actually believe in some sense that part of them lives on. And in a very, very minimal sense, that's true. But when you look at how genes or the genetic relatedness becomes diluted over time, after a few generations, you're looking at a 1% relation, uh, ultimately. Now, this, I want to read off a, a brief uh, snippet from an article, unrelated, it's about infidelity, actually, but to just read this to give you an idea of the reliability of leaving a genetic legacy. So assuming that names such as Attenborough were only founded by one person, could be a mistake, said Professor Jobling. Simulations carried out by the researchers showed that the chance of one male lineage surviving from a single founder through 20 generations was just 9.6%, so less than 10% chance. That's not very good. This is, by the way, an article uh, from a few years back about um, illegitimacy, I'll be posting a link to it. And of course, the further you go down the line, the more and more diluted everything becomes. Now, I'm mentioning this for a variety of reasons, uh, because, like I said, I don't think people have children or reproduce because they really think actively, at least rarely, of genetic legacy in the long run. Uh, there's another issue that I will address in future videos, the very likely, uh, very likely event of humans going extinct. Uh, the distinct possibility that we will not make it off this planet and we'll die in some cataclysmic catastrophe of some sorts. In some sense, I'm saying that most people are genetic dead, dead ends one way or another. But I really want to focus not so much on the genetic dilution over time, or the unlikelihood of uh, gene lineage surviving, etc., and more on the idea of having children. We evolved in an environment where we really only learn to deal with the here and now, and perhaps the immediate uh, hereafter, you know, planning for the next day, maybe the next week, maybe the next few months, possibly, in the case of variable climates where you have uh, cold winters and very uh, highly differentiated seasons, we did not evolve to think about what happens 1,000 years hence, and there are good reasons for that. One, nobody lives that long, uh, except the elves perhaps, but there aren't any among us. And two, I just don't think it really figures into our day-to-day -day cognition. What we're concerned about as human beings is the here and now. We, we do this almost instinctually. This is a, effectively, I would say, a cognitive reflex that we have. And believe it or not, the here and now also applies to children. So what I'm suggesting is that people don't have children, as I said, because they want a genetic legacy that's carried on in uh, distant millennia, because that's very unlikely. It's unlikely that their children will carry that same legacy on. It's possible. But as time passes, it becomes less and less probable until you get basically nothing. I mean, think about the so-called great founders of the haplogroups, uh, various European haplogroups, African, etc. I mean, my maternal haplogroup is, is H. It's the most popular one in Europe. Uh, does the woman who founded this uh, haplo clan, if you will, have any recollection? No, she hasn't existed for about, well, somewhere between 20 and 40,000 years. There's, there's basically no real connection in a mystic sense between genetic legacy and having children. So why do people have children? Well, the obvious reason, of course, is that proximate cause of sex. I mean, children are, of course, very much linked with copulation. Uh, people have their desire to have sex because uh, it furthers the propagation of genes in a distal sense, in an approximate sense, because it's pleasurable. And many a child is born uh, for reasons uh, of sexual lust and because it's an accident or unplanned. But in the planned sense, you know, planned parenthood, if you will, <laughs> no pun intended, 
people still have children for the immediate enjoyment they gain from sure there's that desire to pass on one's genes but they do it for the possibility of having involvement in the children's lives or being close to the children uh, for developing uh, an emotional bond all in the here and now which is to say in most cases people even when they're thinking about children and genetic progeny are living in the here and now they're not thinking about some vastly distant future uh, where their descendants may or may not be alive it's impossible to know so what I want to say here is that we are naturally inclined to live in the moment yes we reminisce about the past and we think about the future we can speculate we can think about well what what is the earth going to be like in 50,000 years none of us will be alive then and it's quite possible in fact very possible that humans won't be around at that point in time but this is the thing that really gets me when people say well you're a genetic dead end given the probabilities as I said uh, long-term genetic dilution which is to say a lack of relatedness the unlikelihood of well, sort of founders specifically male founders uh, actually having their genetic uh, lineage passed down successfully over the course of generations 20 generations in this case we're all more or less genetic dead ends in the long term so what's the point the point is one that biological urge but two because people enjoy children some people in the here and now they don't have children to think about genetic legacy or genetic or to avoid being a genetic dead end very few people do i don't think they say to themselves well hmm i need to avoid being a genetic dead end my attitude to children is i don't really have a problem with them if that's so that's something someone else wants i guess uh, akin to chris jones you know he doesn't have a problem with uh, hard liquor or whiskey but if he enjoys uh, margaritas that's what he enjoys i prefer my life uh, without children now of course there's things like you know being taken care of when i'm old well i'll probably be dead by then with all luck so maybe that's a big issue maybe it's not but generally speaking we tend to focus on things within our lifetime we can f focus on pos posterity as well but when posterity becomes, you know, 100 years from now, 200, 300, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, we begin to lose track of it. It's hard to care about things that are so distant. I mean, we find it difficult even to care about people that are 3,000 miles away. Have you ever had a close relationship with someone, romantic or otherwise, friendship that just sort of disintegrated because of uh, lack of proximity? I mean, same issue. We're just very much concerned with our immediate surroundings and what's going on in the here and now and the here and now i extend to our lifetime which is to say uh when we're born from when we're born till we die so i, I don't really get this argument because if you look at the science like i said it, you know, unlikely that any given man is gonna uh, be that lucky guy who becomes some sort of clan founder and it's over time the degree of relatedness uh, dissipates anyway and most importantly maybe there's some small smidgen of you in terms of dna in some far distant uh, descendant but that's not you you're gone by then you have no cognizance of it you're just a shade well the shade of nothingness as it were so my answer to these many people who pose this question to me as well as the guy who pm me asking me about this because I, I suppose in the case of the guy who pm me it was an issue of his own fears as well as you could really you need to look at it in that in, on, under those circumstances i'm not making things up i mean that's basically the science of how genes work and all the other things uh, we do not live uh, for a future that is much more distant than a few decades i think because by and large we're not capable of that we're capable of thinking about it we're capable of reflecting on it but it's not something that we arrange our lives after. i mean i no, no one here in my audience i think thinks about well you know if i do this what will be like in 300 years well none of us will be around in 300 years so what's the point anyway i wanted to make this relatively brief but also to the point uh, my views and thoughts on genetic legacy genetic dead ends um, you can mystify everything and turn it into a narrative, sure, but the the truth is people have children because 
They want to enjoy children in the here and now, not to survive in some genetic sense, uh, millennia, uh, hence that that's not what people do. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I will check you out later. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.